Keisha. And I'm Brittany. And, and this is the gathering. This is the gathering. <laughs> we are gathering today. What are we gathering about today, y'all? Goal setting and vision boarding. Yes, Woo! yes. And we know that it has been um, a fad. It has been the latest craze for probably the last, I would say, four or five years. Yeah. I think my first vision board was in 20, maybe like 20... 14, 2015, um, and planners got really serious to me, really in the fifth grade when they used to give you those agendas. Yes, I remember Seriously those. Seriously, those agendas. <laughs> I remember those. Yes, yeah. so we are talking about visions and planning. It is the year 2020. Hello, new decade, okay? Vision, baby. Um, just getting over the holidays and ending out 2019, putting a nice little bow on that guy and sending it off. And beginning something Sick. new and beautiful. So we're excited. If you can't tell, we're excited. Mm -hmm. Most of us really love planners. Mm -hmm. Most of us really enjoy the whole vision boarding thing. But some of us do not, and that's okay because we imagine that some of you really love planners and vision boards, and then some of you don't. And so we represent. The, um, a good mix and so we're thinking that you do too yeah. and so we'll be able to talk about each one of those different perspectives definitely for sure um i think kind of going i think starting off with what we like and what we don't like about vision and planning we reached out to some of you guys um thank you followers for being so interactive thank with you us so much you guys, are, you guys are, are so awesome yes for answering questions for telling us what you don't like about vision boards and we kind of want to start off with what we like or what we don't like about planning mm -hmm. so you want to kind of start that off for us for alicia well, I'll, I'll start with saying I think your planning and vision is a great thing. It is a very, it's a positive thing. I think that it is important to set very measurable goals. So you say, I want to, I want to lose weight. I want to, you know, be more thoughtful about my finances. I, just so many things that we all want to do. So I do think that goal setting, measurable goals is important. However, what I, I differ uh, from my gathering mates a bit is that I don't, I've never done a vision board. I have no interest in them. Uh, <laughs> and I don't, I've never really used a planner. I don't do any type of things like that simply because I, I'm just not that person. I, I, I remember getting the agendas uh, as, as a child, but I've never used them because I forget to and it's just to be so regimented, you know, about I have to do these things a day and these things, like it just doesn't work for me. It's important for me to leave it a little more fluid. There are things that I have to get done today that can't wait till the next day and there are things that can't wait. And so I really try to prioritize my time on the things that I have to get done first. And so if it's worth it to you, you'll make time for it. <laughs> but you guys Is there have- a thing that's your thing? So you may not like the vision boards and you mm -hmm. may not like the planners, which is fine because as we mentioned, I mean, it's it's something you have to believe in it to stick with, I believe. Right. But is there something that works for you? What works for me, I do, I am a person who makes a lot of lists. If you look in my work notebook and, and you know, by my bed, there's, there's lots of lists. I know a lot of people get a lot of satisfaction from crossing things out. Yeah. And that is, that's a very satisfying thing, but I find that when I start making lists, they get so long to where it's impossible for me to cross them all off and it makes me more anxious to see because I'm <laughs> continuing to add things. It gets so bad to where, have you ever done something that wasn't on the list and you wrote it on there just so you can scratch it off? <laughs> yes, um, yesterday. It's, it's, cr it's crazy, but you know, it's that mindset. And so I find that I make a lot of very short lists with only four or five things on there. So it is something that I can achieve that day. Because if I keep making lists, 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 I can go down to 21 things because there's 21 things that needs to get done, but that it won't get done today. Yeah. So I keep my list very short to four or five things. I, I can probably accomplish either some of this or, or a portion of this today. Keep it very, very short and very, very simple. And that, I think, works for me. Awesome. Awesome. That's good. Because we, yeah. we asked the same question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We asked the same question to some of our Instagram followers, what works for you? So yes. we did a, the first poll was, 
just asking, is vision boards your thing? Let's do a vision board your thing. And I think 75% of our followers that responded said yes, and then 25% said no. So again, thank you for being interactive and just kind of giving us a good idea about what works for you. Because we want to make sure that we are informing you about what works for us because we're gathering together, but we're also gathering with you via Instagram and eventually YouTube. And so we want to know what works for you. So the vision boards, we got it. Most of you say yay. Some of you say no. And I think that that is represented here. Some of us say yay and and some of us say no. Um, And then we asked what works for you as far as goal setting. And so Perlisha gave us her go-to short list and I think that that's great short manageable because you want to feel accomplished right so you're doing it so that you can stay focused on your day and get things done but you also want to feel accomplished at the end of your day too so a short list helps Corlisha feel accomplished um what are some of our followers saying about what works so here's what some of our followers are saying when we ask to share your favorite tip for goal setting planning and staying organized So like you said, it was 75%, but we got some more responses. And so 80% of you said that you are into visions and planning and vision boards. 20% of you said, eh, not your thing. Some of you said that your favorite tip for goal setting was lists, lots of lists. So we definitely agree with the list thing. How you work your list is up to you. For sure. Because it has to work for you. It has to. And when we say we are all about individuality, we are really about individuality. There is no cooker cutting planning situation that works for everybody. Um, There is no self-care situation that works for everybody. There is no goal setting situation that works for everybody. So do you, boo. The next person says, to do list or key, another list lover. List <laughs> lover. Another person said set realistic goals. All captions for realistic goals. Another person said vision boards and planners. Dot 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 exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. You felt that thing. You did. Another person said the same thing, but said that you should write your goals quarterly which I've been hearing a lot about Mm -hmm. what you want to do for Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 of the year. That's not something that I've done, but I think that could be really, really cool. Yes. Traditional planners with color-coded notes. I think one of our most childlike characteristics is to see things that are vibrant to us. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel fun. It makes you feel excited about things. So color coordinating, highlighters, writing with color pens can really jazz up your planning that's something that you're into. And I even think for the color coding piece, it can also help you to organize. So like we know if you use blue, blue is for work. Um, Maybe green is for family. Red is for whatever your passion is. So our passion, the gathering. So we may write all things, the gathering and our planners in red. Mm -hmm. So it can also help you to coordinate what's going on in your planner. Because if you're busy, if you're booked and busy, then it's going to look maybe overwhelming. But if you chunk it, by using a color system or quarterly, you look at it or whatever, whatever you do to chunk it, it will probably help you feel like you are more prepared when you start your day to get everything done. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I also want to add, there is something very special about taking breaks from your planning or your list, and I think that's something that I forgot far too long and then far too often. Mm-hmm. I get very, very, very tied to things. So much that if I don't get it accomplished during the day, I have a negative feeling. Yes. Sometimes I feel down. I feel like I didn't do enough. And I did stuff that people probably couldn't say they did in a week. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm also, I'm actually trying to remind myself that taking breaks is very, very, very important. I love the Passion Planner. I have had it for the last few years, and one of the things that was recommended to me in the last, uh, in the first few weeks of the year, was to have a day where I have nothing to do. That scares me. That does not make me feel good. But having a day where you can just focus on yourself is really, really important. And to re-energizing, um, refocusing, and just getting some some clarity, a little time off. Consider that as well when you're planning for 2020. You know, planning, goal setting, vision boards, it's all about being very intentional about 
whatever you're trying to accomplish. It's about intentionality. So you're going out, you're buying a planner. You're intentional about using the planner. You're intentional about gathering your supplies for your vision boards. Like you're making intentional steps all with the goal of accomplishing whatever it is that you're embarking on, whatever journey you're embarking on. And we encourage you to be intentional about your self-care too. I say all the time, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So you're pouring out to all the people in your lives that matter. You're pouring out to your career. You're pouring, pouring, pouring. You've got to replenish at some point. You've got to fill that cup back up. And sometimes it's as simple as just taking a nap. Sometimes it's a staycation or going away. Sometimes it's a bath. Sometimes it's a glass of vino and a little music. We like I the mean, vino. <laughs> we, like we like the music. The music and the vino <laughs> and the food. We like that, food. okay? Um, sometimes it's getting with the people that you enjoy and just getting with the people that you enjoy and doing nothing, watching TV, um, sitting around having a conversation, but whatever it is, just be intentional about taking care of yourself because you're taking care of everything in that planner, but take care of you because you are the constant in all of those plans. Mm -hmm. And I would also say in your quest to make your uh, dreams and your visions and your goals come to fruition, be very kind to yourself mm -hmm. and know that goals change, life happens, it, it can be, it, it, it's fluid, don't be so tied to where I have to have this thing done by this thing. Just be, you, you are one person, be very kind to yourself. If you don't have, at the end of this year or, or at the end of this quarter, if you don't have everything accomplished, change it. Re adjust, readjust it, readjust some things in your life. Uh, it may look different than the way you thought it would look, but it, you know, it may not have been the full uh, 20 pounds, I may not be the full $5,000 by this quarter, but you know, it's something I'm, I'm in a different place than where I started. So just be very kind to yourself, be very patient with yourself, and know that in order to make things don't just happen overnight. Like you didn't, they don't, and they also don't change overnight. It's going to take more than one year, one quarter, you know, one period of time in order for lasting large changes to happen. So just be very kind, be very patient with yourself. And your, 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 these are things that's supposed to motivate you and make you happy. If your list and if your journals at the end of the day make you feel unaccomplished or has negative connotations, then that's not your, that's not the right thing yeah. to do. It's supposed to, at the end of the day, you're you're supposed to feel still motivated, still knowing that you know I'm, st uh, you know, the dream is not working exactly like I wanted to, but it is working. It is happening. I just have to readjust and every day you open your eyes another opportunity to get it ready so just be very very kind to yourself during this process <laughs> i think that that to me in the clinical world is called reframing yeah so i look at my day and i have what number did you use 21 things i have 21 things to do okay and i may have gotten to 18 of the 21 some people will look at it and say dang but those last few i just didn't get done what happened? What did I do wrong? You know, it's a it's a blame type of situation. Instead, first of all, let's look at that thing when it comes to numbers. 18 out of 21 is amazing, okay? Wow. Um, you passed that test if you got 18 out of 21 correct, and the majority of your items got accomplished, right? Yeah. We want to reframe that thing to say, you know, I did well, I did the majority of what I set out to do. And then we, but also let's do a little bit of um, introspection. Let's let's look at it a little bit. Maybe 21 is, is a big number. Maybe we should cap it at a different number or may, or, re, or reorder or maybe prioritize differently so that it's a more manageable goal. So we want to make sure that even at the end of your day, if you weren't as successful as you sought out to be, one, give yourself on the pat a, a pat on the back, make sure that you are celebrating every victory because you want to have victories that you had to plan out big and small. Mm -hmm. And then you want to recalibrate. So if you need to look at something and change up some things so that it does work better in your favor, then do so. Be willing to do so. It's not a failure. It's just, it's a journey. So it should evolve with the changing needs of what's going on. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. It's very easy to point out things that went wrong, but it definitely takes some restructuring cognitively to to to, to start to think about like what went right. Yeah. So um, all of this talk reminded me of something that happened to me in the last few years. Uh, like I kind of started with, I think I did my first vision board in 2014, 2015, and I did one every year up until I think 20. 
2018, 2017. And what happened to me at that time is that I was getting very, very overwhelmed. I had a lot going on that year. I was having some health complications. I had gotten engaged and was planning a wedding. I had some people in my family pass away. I started a new position at work. I had a lot going on. Um, some things were beautiful things and some things were devastating things, to be honest. But I realized that having that vision board and all those pictures and all those phrases and all those goals on there that I didn't necessarily feel like I had the energy or the attention to get to actually made me feel a little down. It was not how I expected the last few years of my life to go. So I did not make a vision board. One of my best friends throws a vision, part, a vision board party every year and I didn't even go. I didn't even go and I've been to every single one that she's done. Um, but I was not able to, and I realized and recognized that in myself, so I took a break off of vision boards. 2020, I'm getting back to it because I'm feeling good, okay, a little bit different than I was the last few years, so I'm excited, but that also touches on why it's okay to take breaks, to switch it up if it's not working for your current chapter. Um, every chapter is different, every layer brings new things, so just knowing that it is okay to change it, to yes. change it up. Because vision boarding is fun, mm -hmm. and we do the parties, and we spend a lot of time making them. And, and like, I mean, I really enjoy it. Yes. It is also a little bit exhausting. Mm -hmm. Exhausting in a good way, though. So just because it pulls a lot out of you. If you're, put, if you're pouring yourself into it, like what we were just talking about, you're pouring into this vision board, it can deplete you a little bit. And if you already feel overwhelmed with life, if you already feel depleted, and you pulled in a hundred different places, it may not be best for you to do it at that time. Yeah. And so it's okay, like Janelle said, it's okay to follow the ebbs and flows of your life and adjust. As long as we, what we're encouraging is that you're just doing something to keep yourself motivated and organized. We want you to continue to plan for exciting things in life, plan to accomplish all the things that you're setting forth you know, to do, but stay organized and motivated on the journey. So Janelle talked about a change, you know, switching up. She didn't do vision boards for a couple of years, but she's back on. I am. So I'm ready. So I'm going to talk about a change. This year I switched planners. And I'm so excited because I love planners. Like I remember the agendas from middle school and high school, and I was big on them then. I come from a lineage of educators, and so we were, we were taught you know, that you stick with your agenda, you write everything down, and my mom checked our agenda and she signed off on it and all of that. So agendas, that's something that I've been using for forever. But now in my adulthood, I use it a little bit differently. It's not just what to do, but it's to kind of help me stay focused on what I'm trying to accomplish. So this year, I switched to the Law of Attraction Planner. And when I tell y'all, I'm so excited. I am so excited. So I, every year I do, I buy a planner and I go on this witch hunt to find like the best planner for what I'm feeling right now. Last year I had a beautiful planner. It had um, beautiful black women all throughout the planner and it had recipes, it had coloring pages, it had journaling sections. It, it was beautiful and I've like cut some of the women out and posted places because I mean the artwork was immaculate. And so that was good for me last year. The year before, I had a different planner. I've always just kind of switched it up. But this year, y'all, I have the Law of Attraction Planner, and I'm so excited. I have it here. So I went with the black hard cover. <laughs> it's very Britney, okay? So um, black, clean lines, sleek, hello. That's us. <laughs> we didn't even plan we to do the all black, but here we go. But you'll, you'll find me a lot in all. Our thoughts that's, gather. That's my thing. Our thoughts gather from the house. <laughs> different houses. Very true. We'll be gathering. Very true. So I got the black hard cover, but they have different covers. But there are so many good things in this planner. So it's helping me to focus on the now and making sure that I am taking care of myself. But it's also a lot about attracting what I'm wanting in different areas of my life. So it travel, self-care, family, whatever I want. There is a mini vision board that I can create inside of the planner, which is really exciting. So basically just find what works for you. Um, but right now, at this phase of my life, the Law of Attraction Planner is 
what felt just very fitting. And so I'm excited to see what I'm able to attract in my life. Yeah. 2020, 2020 vision. I'm excited. Yeah. So work, but do what works for you. And so it's going to change and evolve as you change and evolve. Embrace that change. Follow that change. And it'll work out for your good. So I think the most important takeaway is that vision planning and goal setting can look very different for everybody. So whether it's making vision boards or planners or post-its or notes or whether it's, you know, just talking to loved ones about your hopes and dreams and things that you want to accomplish, it looks very different and everybody will have, have their own way and what works for them. But it's important that you just get it out, get it out of your head. Say your dreams out loud, write them down, let them be measurable so you'll know when you've accomplished them, uh, make them realistic and attainable, and it should be something that's motivated and positive and should not make you readjust, reframe your thoughts, and switch it up, and maybe do something different. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think specifically for some mental health challenges like, I don't know, depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, um, ADHD. Feeling ADHD, feeling overwhelmed, just that, that challenge of feeling overwhelmed, it's really important to get those things out of your head. You can clear up a lot of mind space if you jot a couple of things down. Finding a way to make sure that you can get those things out in a way where it's a little more organized and you're not as confused, right. you're not as overwhelmed, right. you're not as you know frustrated, mm -hmm. is very, very helpful getting it out of your head. That's what planning is all about. Taking some time and um, writing in your planner, writing or cutting things out of magazines and putting them on your vision boards. Like texting your friend like today, I'm gonna work out for 20 minutes, sis. That's it, call me to it. Call me to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I'm a visual person. And so I think of it as you have this big, beautiful brain and it's intricate and it's powerful. It's also, it, it does a lot. So it, it keeps our thoughts, but it also controls our functioning. So it does a lot. I think that we can give it a little break sometimes if we if we use what's around us too to kind of help balance balance life. So I'm thinking of my brain, but I'm, then I'm looking at like the entire foot. It's a, it's a larger space, just tangibly. It's a larger space. And so I would cover like the floor with paper or whatever. And if you start to get those things out of your mind in a larger space, then you can sort it out differently. It's hard to sort in your mind. And so you can sort it out. Like I'm thinking about when I look at my laundry room and I have laundry to do and I see all these clothes and I'm like, oh, who's going to wash all this? You, because who else is going to do it? Yeah. But then I, t I bring it out of that small jam-packed room and I spread it out across the floor into different piles. Then I can see what I'm working with, A, and then I can come up with a plan as to how I'm going to get it all accomplished. Yeah. So think of your brain, your mind, as this packed laundry room of clothes that need to be washed. And then think of like your living room floor, this open space of an opportunity for you to kind of sort things out and then come up with a plan to have how to get it all done. And so that's why we encourage a planner, a vision board, or a small list. You can Mary Jane Paul style it and put your post-it notes everywhere. You can do like Janelle said, just text your friend and say, hey, remind me by the end of the day, did you work out? Write a list in your phone, if whatever smart device you have, there's a note section, write something out really quickly, set a reminder. Just do something though, because what we're encouraging is wellness. Yeah. And we want you to feel accomplished. We want you to feel empowered. We want you to accomplish everything that you're setting out to accomplish because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. We want you to remember that you deserve it. You deserve to have the life that you're dreaming of. And so it's gonna take some time yes. and it's gonna take some planning, but it is attainable if you work, if you plan and you work your plan. Yes. Yeah. So I think with that being said, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to us. Thank you for being honest with us and telling us what works and what does not work. Thank you for hearing us out about changes that we have made and yes. things that we like and don't like. And we really hope that 2020 brings exactly what you have um, in mind. We hope that you give yourself a little grace mm -hmm. and a little space to talk it out, to plan it out, to walk it out, and to get it out. Um, and we hope that you wash your clothes. Wash those clothes. Wash them. Get that laundry room empty. Clear it out. You made me feel bad because I got a laundry room full We're of clothes. Okay. It's, Thank it's you not guys. A judgment session. Thank you yeah. guys. But 
as Janelle said, um, thank you for gathering with us yeah. and thank you for sharing with us. So we are encouraging you to share with us with your vision boards if you yes. are making them and share with us your planning ideas and just keep us posted. I think, Felicia, you were encouraging people to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so show us your, your vision boards, your planners. Show us how you have things color-coded, how you have it organized. And make sure you tag us at um, it's underscore the gathering yes. uh, on 